Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're going to do a project today uh, for the Georgia Museum of Agriculture where I do some volunteer work at. If you follow my channel regularly, you know they've got a little narrow gauge uh, railroad over there. They run a little steam locomotive, 1917 Vulcan Iron Works, 040 steam locomotive, little industrial narrow gauge engine. Got about a mile of track running around the museum uh, that they give rides on and so forth like that. Now the, the track out there is narrow gauge as opposed to standard gauge. Now, standard gauge is four foot eight and a half inches here in the U.S. Uh, narrow gauge technically is anything less than that, but the most standard of the narrow gauges is a three foot gauge, which is what our little railroad is over there. Uh, we very often used in uh, mountain railroads as well as in industrial applications. Uh, and We've been doing some track work, or the museum has been. They've uh, been had some uh, new ties put in recently, and in the process of doing the track work, they've got a need for some gauge bars. Uh, they need to get these put in, and I've got a couple here. And this is a gauge bar off of a standard gauge railroad. Basically, there's a hook on this end, there's another hook on the other end, and it's got a threaded area. And what you do is you hook this on the outside of the bottom of the rails and you just tighten it up and what it does is it shrinks that gauge and it helps to keep the railroad engaged. So if you're going into a curve, what happens is, is it, it wants to push the outside rail out and make the gauge wider. And what they do in the railroads is they put these gauge bars in there and that just kind of helps keep everything held in place. So uh, they've got a need, they need three or four more gauge bars to put in some curves out there. They have some standard gauge gauge bars. My job today is shortening these down and turning them into a narrow gauge. So the original bar here is, what I say, I think it's about six foot long and we want to shorten it down to 49 inches, cut it off, and thread the ends. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Gonna to be doing some of this over on the metal lathe. Also gonna be using a big die to finish it up, and also cleaning up the nuts there with a big large tap. So let's get over here on the lathe, or let's tell you what, first off, let's get this cut to the proper length, then we'll go to the lathe, get this set up. It's a little bit tricky because of this, uh, this end down here. You got this hook, it's a little bit difficult to chuck up, but I'll show you how we're gonna do that and uh, we'll get this job done. And start by just cutting these off to length and uh, I've already got a mark here measured. Length we wanna make 49 inches. This is an uh, inch and a quarter hot rolled steel is what these are made out of. And to cut it, I'm just gonna use my Morse 14 inch metal devil saw. This is kind of like a uh, carpenter's uh, chop saw, but it's a little bit slower turning. It's still pretty fast, but it's made for cutting metal. It does a really good job. Let's do it. to it. I've got this uh, rod over here set up in my lathe now. I've got it chucked into four jaw chuck. Notice that we got the crook down here, so one of the jaws is sticking out pretty good. Uh, and we got the steady rest down here. I'm gonna put a drill a center hole in there. We'll put a center in there to hold it up while we're threading. Now one thing to note guys is that all of these, right down here in this end, there's a pretty big bend in them. So what I've concentrated on doing is getting it, I haven't really been worried about getting things running true down on this end. I've been trying to get my run out as minimal as I can down on this end of the machine because I'm only gonna be threading about six inches. I can't get it perfect. And uh, you're gonna see some wobbling down here. I'm not worried about it. It doesn't matter. It's totally irrelevant. I'm not gonna go to the trouble to try to straighten these things any more than they are because it doesn't matter. All we're worried about is running fairly true down here uh, so that we can do this. So let's get in here and uh, Put our uh, center in there and we'll be ready to start threading this thing. Let's get our center in here. to hold our center. 
need to thread about six inches down here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give me a mark where that's at. Next thing I'm gonna do is just come in here and I'm gonna just touch that off. And I wanna just uh, make sure we're at seven threads per inch. So uh, let me get a number up on my Gonna back that out there. Take my thread gauge and confirm. Okay, we're on seven threads per inch. Put some oil on this. All right, we'll make a wait on a number to come around here on our thread dial and make our first pass down through here. Now when I get down to the end, I'm just gonna pull it out and um, worry about stopping it after we get down there. So I'm just gonna go down to my line right there, pull out, come back down, we'll go back to zero. Feed in some more. Rinse and repeat until we get some thread started. I decided to slow it down a little bit. It's just getting a little bit more chatter down here than I really like. stop here with threading on the lathe and uh, we're going to actually finish this out using a die but I wanted to get it started on here just to get the thread started because it is such a deep cut trying to cut this whole thing with a die would be really really difficult but now that we got some thread started we're going to go finish it up uh, just using a die let's uh, go set up for that so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over I got this uh, nice Greenfield tap and die little giant it's a inch and a quarter seven die. This was actually a gift from a viewer. This thing's really hard to get started threading, but once you uh, get some thread started on it, on the lathe, it'll just follow right through there. And the nice thing about this die is it's gonna take it right to size. We got plenty of leverage here, so this isn't too much trouble to cut. Although I am gonna go grab some oil and put on there.
nice little workout here. But uh, particularly with this metal being bent a little bit, the nice thing about this die is it's going to cut perfect threads and it's going to compensate for that bend in the metal and uh, make sure we're not cutting a crooked thread like you're uh, apt to do over on the lathe uh, when you got stock that's not running perfectly true. So the whole purpose of the lathe here in this case was to get the bulk of the stock out of the metal so that we could uh, run this die down, get it started easier, and so it wouldn't kill us as we went down through here. So looks like I've got about another two or three turns and we'll have our six inches. All right, I think we are down to where we're cutting a full thread now. And you can see it got really, really tight here. Let me tighten this nut up. I don't want to have to pull this thing cutting a full thread. It'd be really, really hard. So uh, let's clear these chips out best we can and take it off. I also want to make sure I got good threads in my nut here. So I pulled this nut off that we're going to be using and putting it in the vise. I've got a big inch and a quarter seven tap here. We'll get it started. Put some oil in here. And using my Greenfield number eight tap wrench, we're just going to run a tap down through here and just make sure we got nice clean threads. Feel it cutting in here a little bit. It started nicely, but when we got down there to the middle, it started. It's not cutting a lot, but it is cutting some. And just run that all the way through, or at least to the full threads there. And it's pretty much in the full threads now. So yeah, it's good. So we'll pull that out. Go try it out over there on the threads. Go ahead and assemble this while we're at it. First is the little clamp that clamps on the bottom of the railroad track. Uh, we'll put that on there. There's a uh, lock washer that goes in here. And then this big uh, square head nut. And that feels good. I can screw it on by hand. So that's a nice fit perfect fit actually so that's great all right I think we got it done I got about two or three more of these I got to do I'll do those off camera get those out to the museum uh, but uh, you see the process uh, pretty straightforward but this would be really hard to do if we didn't have the lathe trying to get this thing started with just the die without getting those threads started it's nearly impossible I'm not going to say it is impossible but you'll really struggle with it uh, but being able to start those threads over on the lathe and then come over here and finish them with the die. In this application, working with bent stock that's not running perfectly true in the lathe, it's great. If it had been running perfectly true in the lathe, I'd have just cut them all over there on the lathe, been done with it. But this way, we get a nice thread form all the way down. And there you go, guys. That's going to be a wrap. Uh, we'll take this out to the museum. They'll be able to get their track where it will stay engaged now that they've done all this nice track work out there. But there you go, converting some standard gauge uh, gauge rods to narrow gauge. A little bit of work in the shop, and it's all done. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please leave comments if you like, and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.